Noahide is seven laws from Jewish Torah, supposedly laws God gave to Noah. If you break the laws, most punishments are beheading. George Bush Sr. signed it into law. He snuck it in with an Education Day recognition bill, recognizing the Jewish scholar who supports living under Noahide laws. For those that don't already know, there is an evil sect of Jewish people that practice the Kabbalah, mysticism, witchcraft. You know where the tarot cards come from. Tarot cards are like a portable Kabbalah, if that makes sense. Both are hinged by a tree of life. It's a diagram with 10 points and 22 paths. There's your 22 major cards of the tarot. And also, witches used to have 22 paths or courses of study. It's all the same old witchcraft, later called Kabbalah or tarot. Kabbalah originated in the 1600s, although they try and convince people it began way earlier. There's a lot of subtly implied, though. In their rise to position, there's a bunch of ritualistic junk, and then they choose to be a goat instead of a sheep. The evils are all in there, and it's all based on the Old Testament, and 12 tribes, you name it, 10 commandments. That makes it even more evil to me. Talk about the deepest depths of Luciferianism. And on the JewishScholars.org website, it talks about peace and love and how they want to implement the Noahide laws into the education systems and charities through the United Nations. This is some really creepy stuff. And this is who and what George Bush is honoring with the so-called Education Day. U.S. President George W. Bush discusses Roadmap to World Peace based on seven universal Ben Noah laws. You can look that up. Among the religious leaders was Rabbi Yaakov Cohen, who represented the Worldwide Institute of Noahide Code, an organization dedicated to promote the Noahide Code of seven universal Noah laws. Rabbi Cohen presented the roadmap to world peace, explaining that the Noahide laws will unite all of mankind. The Talmud lists the punishment for blasphemy, the ineffable name of God, as death. The sons of Noah are to be executed by decapitation for most crimes, considered one of the lightest capital punishments, by stoning if he has intercourse with a Jewish betrothed woman, or by strangulation if the Jewish woman has completed the marriage ceremonies but had not yet consummated the marriage. In Jewish law, the only form of blasphemy which is punishable by death is blaspheming the ineffable name Leviticus. The Mammonides state that anyone who does not accept the seven laws is to be executed, as God compelled the world to follow these laws. However, for other prohibitions, such as the grafting of trees and bestiality, he holds that the sons of Noah are not to be executed. Now keep in mind, these Jews are not worshipping God Almighty, the I Am that I Am. They're worshipping Lucifer. According to the Mammonites, the Jewish scholars, anyone who accepts upon himself and carefully observes the seven commandments, is one of the righteous of the nations of the world and has a portion in that world to come. How creepy is that? According to Wikipedia, in practice, Jewish law makes it very difficult to apply the death penalty. But America is under U.S. law now, isn't it? That's crazy. If you look on their .org page, you'll see they're all up in the United Nations talking about world peace and coming together in unity. Blasphemy against God is probably the law that will cause Christians to be beheaded because these Jews are demonic. They don't believe in Jesus Christ, so to them, we would be worshiping a false god. Now, this is a small group of Jews that practice this. It's like the evil Jewish Pharisees back in the time when they crucified Jesus on the cross. These are those that claim to be Jews, but are not. God literally calls them out in the Bible for what they are. In Revelation 3, 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Like I said in their little rituals to grow in levels, they literally proclaim they are goats and not sheep. In layman's term, they are Satan's, not God's people. 
Now for those who will proclaim it's like the Muslims claiming only a small group are responsible for evil, like ISIS, let me clarify something. All Muslims, all Muslims read the Quran and believe in Islam that tells them all to murder us. Not all Jews believe in the Noahide laws. That's the difference right there. So don't go blaming all Jews for this. Recognize the source this is coming from. Those claiming to be Jews that are not. Revelation 3.9 So apparently this Noahide law can be implemented at any time. But something like this, it can only be carried out with a nationwide martial law in place. Now I did a video a couple years back, Guillotines in the U.S. Update, January 2014. I'll leave the link in the description. It talks about the state of Georgia lawmakers trying to pass a law to use guillotines in prison for organ harvesting. It didn't pass, but apparently the guillotines were brought in during this, and they're all being stored on military bases. 30,000 guillotines is what's reported. So the guillotines are already here. Bush has already passed the law to go back to the Noahide Seven Laws, which includes beheadings if you break the laws. The Institute of Noahide held the event One People, One World at the United Nations, demonstrating the universal appeal of the Noahide Seven Laws, regardless of divisions of nationality, class, or creed. They claim to be protecting everyone, both Jews and non-Jews, labeling it a humanitarian effort, an attempt to promote its values. Just don't break the laws and you won't be beheaded. Caller, caller, welcome to the show. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, Tovia and Will. This is Sean in Montana. Hello, Sean. Welcome back to the show. Very good. Almost uh, every week. Yeah, hey, I know, right? You're I'm going to set a record. <laughs> well, I'm starting to get your mail here. I think that's when we're going to have to cut cut things off or slow it down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what's, okay. what's the question for everybody? I've been reading some articles with my wife, and um, some of these articles out there talk like the Noahide laws are actually evil. Um, they are right. um, completely corrupt. Um, they're used to, in the future, potentially, when the Messianic Age happens or whatever, for the Jews to behead people who, you know, don't say God's name incorrectly and stuff like that. But my, my question is, is do the Noahide laws overwrite the Ten Commandments? And where specifically in the Tanakh Torah do the seven Noahide laws come from? Okay, gotcha. Do the Noahide laws override the, the Big Ten? And where in the Tanakh does the Noahide laws come from? Okay, very good. Very good. Rabbi, I got that okay? Just for those who are watching this who are not familiar with this phrase, it's a term we use because every human being is today is a descendant of Noah. Every person alive today is a descendant of the eight people who survived the flood that took place thousands of years ago. What I think happens is that the term Noahide scares people because I never heard of that term. Usually people use these terms and people go, ah, we don't believe in Noahide. Well, a Noahide is somebody who is not a member of the children of Israel, not to the best of their knowledge, the descent of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that have embraced the Jewish faith, but have not converted to Judaism in the sense that becoming a Jew, becoming a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You may ask, how do you, descend, how do you change who you are a descendant of? I'm not going to go into that right now. The Noahide laws are seven. The, the number one and most important is the prohibition against blasphemy and and its corollary that every person is created in the image of God and must worship God. In fact, all the Noahide laws, a person must observe them 
because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob commanded that person to do that. Now, such a person has a place in the world to come. The calling to worship God and submit to God is made all over the Jewish scriptures long before Mount Sinai. Abraham was considered righteous, and so was Job. Both of them lived long before the Ten Commandments were given at Mount Sinai. Oh, if there were no Noahide laws, what did they do right? I, I, I have to say this. I find when people say that they don't believe in this Noahide law business, and they'll speak about it that way, I just stand there with my mouth open wondering, did you ever read the Bible? And they'll go, show me the Noahide laws. Well, the Torah doesn't use that language, um, just like the word religion isn't in the Bible, but it certainly talks about having a faith um, in God and, and following that faith. But if, 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 I mean, let's play what if, okay? If we are to believe that the nations of the world were not given any commandments, told nothing, and the first time commandments were ever given by God was to Moses at Mount Sinai. If that's the first time, then I need you to explain to me what exactly did Cain do wrong. That means he was never told not to murder. Moreover, how do you explain Genesis 6? I mean, Genesis 6 is the is an explanation, essentially, of why God would destroy the world, because they were sinful. They were in rebellion against God. They had committed these horrific sins, not only denying God, but they were engaged in rape, forcing women to bear their children, theft, destruction. What was wrong with this? What did the people of Sodom do wrong? I, I'm, that means, think, my friends, think. It, incidentally, one of the prohibitions, the seven laws, that means what I think people who say, I don't believe in Noahite, these Noahite laws, is they, they're going, it just sounds strange to me. I'm not seeing that phrase. And I grant it, they're not. They co may come from a Christian world, they're not aware of it, not familiar with it. But just forget the, the, the linguistics and just ask yourself, are you saying that prior to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, or prior to Exodus 12, where we encounter uh, Moses telling the Jews that they have to, uh, about the of Rosh Chodesh, and by the way, Chodesh uh, Tov, because now we're going into the final month of the year, Adar, uh, this evening for me here in Indonesia. Um, it means if you're saying that no commandments were given to the nations of the world, that the nations had no commandments, that I need you to explain to me why God will bring the flood. That means God punished people for violating the commandments that he, they were never warned about. They would just go, I didn't know you're not supposed to do that. Do you understand that? You, it, it actually says, for instance, one of the seven Noahide laws, it, it's the phrase Noahide laws, let's just jettison the term. The, the commandments given to the nation of the world prior to Mount Sinai, prior to the Jews even going to Egypt, but what the world had is clear from the Bible. And I know why, because just people go on YouTube, and I don't know, that's where they get their scholarship from. It's strange that the show is uh, largely watched on YouTube, but you, you got to know who you're studying from. Noah was warned, read Genesis 9, following the flood, Noah and his descendants were given permission to eat meat. Prior to the flood, they were vegetarians. And it specifically says there that they are forbidden to eat the flesh of a living animal. That's one of the seven Noahide laws. So I don't know what you're talking about when you say there were no Noahide laws. If there were no Noahide laws, I need you to explain to me what Job did that was righteous. I need you to explain to me what the world did wrong if they weren't warned. Uh, there can't be punishment if people weren't aware that there's something wrong with this sort of behavior. The answer is, 
obvious that the nations of the world had al Kabola, which means they had already received it going back all the way back to Adam, that there was a way that God wanted the people of the world to live, and that murder was unacceptable, and theft was unacceptable, and that immoral life was unacceptable. If it wasn't unacceptable, I need you to tell me what exactly the people of Sodom did wrong. That means if God never said a word of how to live your life, if there were no laws prior to Mount Sinai, I need somebody to tell me, to explain the end of of Genesis 18 and the entire uh, chapter 19. I want to know what Sodom did wrong. Because the people of Sodom will go, um, did we do something wrong? Were we told to do something differently? Uh, When Abraham bargained with God, in a sense, pleaded with God, perhaps there are uh, 50 righteous people, 40 righteous people in the city. What would have made someone righteous? What commandments would they have been keeping, observing, if there were no, no, if there were no laws prior to Mount Sinai? You can't believe this. The people who say, I don't believe in no hard laws, I think are probably really good people. And they just think the term comes from the Talmud, which it does. And they think, therefore, it's rabbinic Judaism and it's not biblically based. And they're told this by their pastor or they're watching people who wouldn't, who really just don't know scripture. And it, look, what did I say to you on this broadcast? What, what, is there anything I said to you that a seven-year-old who's raised in a religious home a Bible-believing home, would find surprising? No. There would be no reason what Sodom wanted to... uh, For instance, one of the prohibitions, one of the commandments for for any child of God is to live a moral life. Oh, what the meaning uh, that they would not have illicit sexual relations. Well, I want to know what was wrong with Sodom. Why was homosexuality, what was wrong with it? If no one said anything about it. Uh, It should be stated, incidentally, that when we talk about seven laws, I must state it because this will not be understood. These are seven categories of laws. Um, so there are, when it talks when when for instance the commandment to abstain from living an immoral life personally there's a whole wide range of relationships there's actually 19 relationships that are forbidden uh, it's not you know you can't sleep with your sister incest is forbidden to any person because every person is creating the image of God so people who, who So I want to answer the guy's question. Um, he talked about, well, what do they do wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go to the scriptures and see if we can find out what um, was done wrong and um, see if the Bible gives us an answer. Galatians 3, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only what I've learned of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He, therefore, that ministers to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye, therefore, that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, proceed preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Now here's the thing God would justify the heathen. Here's something the first thing I want to reveal to you about the word heathen and what heathen means because you should never call yourself a heathen if you're saved. KJV says heathen well CSB says what? Justify the what? Gentiles. ESV says the Gentiles. Right? Let's go to NIV Gentiles. Let's go to the Hebrew version of this goyim when a person calls you a gentile or a goyim they're calling you an unbelieving heathen meaning you don't serve the one true god right so they look at you as a heathen nation that's why they say they look at everyone outside that who they consider at least the rabbinic quote-unquote judaism considers everyone outside 
who's not what they call a quote unquote Jew according to the flesh, which is false. They consider those people to be Gentiles or Goyim. They consider you to be part of the Esau and Ishmael nations, which is weird because again, Jacob and Esau were twins. So that kind of ruins that, but that's what they believe. Uh, so it says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. So Abraham had the gospel, preached the gospel. He wasn't justified by works, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the law of the law of the book of the law to do them. So it's saying, look, if you try to start with the law, you can't start with the law. You can't try to work the law later and you can't try to finish with the law. Right. It's not by the law. Right. Not of works lest any man should. Be. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of faith. But the man that doth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, which are heathens, which are goyim, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, what? Through faith. You become a child of what? God through what? Faith. And that's when you receive the Spirit after you believe the gospel. So same thing happened with who? Abraham. Brethren, I that's just, by the way, that's why they need to try to erase and confuse you with the Gentile heathen. A lot of times they won't tell you that Gentile means heathen. What they'll say is Gentile just means any nation that's not what? They'll say any any nation that's not Israel, which is fake. So that's why they lie to you. They don't tell you that a Gentile is a heathen. A Goyim is a heathen. And it's kind of like an inside joke because they'll call you a Gentile and a Goyim. And you'll see someone say, oh, a Gentile Christian. A Gentile is anybody who doesn't believe on the one true God. So that makes everyone who's outside of Christ a Gentile. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. It just told you how you, once you believed and got the spirit, it was the Holy Spirit of promises. So if it's talking about Abraham and his seed, and he's talking about the seed of promise, which is not of the flesh, talking about after you get the, after you believe you're born again of the spirit, well, Abraham's seed obviously is talking about those who are what? Regenerated by the what? The washing and renewing of the Holy Ghost, right? It's those who are born not a corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible what? Word of God. The parable is this, the seed is uh, the word of God, right? That's why the Bible says children of the flesh aren't children of God. Children of promise are counted for the seed. Children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of what? Promise are counted for the seed. That's a binary. That's not very hard to figure out. If it says the children of the flesh aren't children of God, but the children of promise are counted for the seed, and you only get the, talks about the Holy Spirit of promise, that's, that's not hard to figure out. It's binary. He said not to seeds as of many, right? Because there's only, in the beginning, was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. There's only one God. So it can't be seeds, plural. It has to be born again by the what? Incorruptible what? Word of God. So anytime you hear somebody lying to you, like uh, a Mike Brown or whatever, he's just lying to you because he does, he's trying to make Jew by the flesh because he's trying to he's trying to relish in his flesh. He's trying to glory in his flesh. He's not giving the glory to God. You know, so you got to be aware of the tricks and stuff that these guys use. Right. Because they're 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 crypto political carnal Zionists. And carnal Zionists, they want this world. And he, the reason they don't want to convert anyone and say no one else can become Jews is because they had to co-opt and steal the identity of what it means to be a Jew, according to the Bible. When the Bible says a Jew is not one outwardly according to the flesh, but inwardly circumcised in the heart by the what? Spirit, which you only get after you believe the gospel. They just dismiss that or they'll just say, well, that's in a certain dispensation. And so the reason that they need to have one group be a carnal, like a dispensationalist is because... They can't have, quote unquote, Jews arguing that because that would be too obvious. So what they do is they got some some people who are um, basically crypto pseudo Zionists, fake pretend wannabes who will work together because they it's a scam. It's all together a scam. So they have to divide up the individual roles, good cop, bad cop. 
And it's like it's like a person can't defend themselves necessarily because it becomes too obvious. So they get another person to do it and say, "Okay, you'll be the person to battle against this as a quote unquote Gentile Christian, so to speak, which is an oxymoron. Right. He said not to seize as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is what Christ. And this is why this is where uh, Catholicism comes in, because God is not flesh. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. Those that worship him was worshiping in spirit and truth. And so this is why they invented the what? The Trinity, because the Trinity is trying to tell you that God is part flesh. That's a lie. God is a spirit. Right. God is a spirit. So God is the spirit. God is not flesh. If God is flesh, then that would make Mary God. And you should start worshiping Mary. And then you have to worship everyone who's of the same flesh of Mary, which is all men are made of one flesh and one blood. So now you have to worship yourself. And now what you've done, is you made yourself equal to God. That's why they invented the Trinity, because even though people who call themselves Jews, according to the flesh, say they think that the Trinity is wrong, which it is. It's actually a Trinity is false. They actually need the Trinity because think about it. They're saying that they're what? The children of God according to what? The flesh. That's a contradiction. They're saying God is a spirit. And they, they're saying, look, they, they said in the Bible, the Pharisees arguing with Jesus said, thou being, thou art not 50 years old. Thou being a man, maketh thyself equal to God, right? And they said, you're not 50 years old. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Now that's, of course, talking about the spirit. Because God came in the flesh, but God's not flesh. And so they went to what? They tried to kill him. But the thing is, they tried to kill him, but yet they were saying that they were children of God because they were Abraham's physical descendants. So they themselves were trying to mix the spirit with the flesh. And the Bible said that is born of flesh is flesh. That is born of spirit is spirit. Right? It's not. You can't mix the two. Right? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature Old things are passed away. All things become new, right? And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life, right? So the seed is Christ, but that's, of course, the spiritual seed. It's not talking about the flesh, right? And this, I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, right? Listen to this. This is the important part. And this, I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, where? In Christ. See this part, this in Christ part? It's really important. The law, which was 430 years, where? After. Cannot disannul. That it should make the promise of none effect. Meaning it was always by the Spirit. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. It is saying that that law, <laughs> it was 430 what, 30 years after, right? And said it can't disannul because Christ fulfilled the law, but God is always pleased by faith. No one kept the law ever, ever. Jesus Christ came and fulfilled the law, but no one kept the law, right? And so this is the thing. I want you to take notice of this. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ Right. So the covenant was in Christ. So people wonder, because this is this is problematic for a Zionist, a carnal Zionist in Christ. Anytime they say in Christ, they're talking about the spirit. Right. When they talk about the inward man, it's talking about the spirit. Just know that in the Bible, when it talks about the inward man and the outer man. The outer man is the flesh. Right. And the inner man is what? The spirit. Because if you believe you have the spirit in you, but no one can tell who's born again and who's not. You can't look at the outer appearance. That's what it says. Man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the inner appearance. God looks at the heart, right? Because God says, I give them a new, what? A new heart. You're a new creature in Christ. So you can't tell that from the outer appearance. And it's not by work. So you couldn't tell that even by how a person behaved or conducted themselves or acted because it's a free gift, right? So let's look at this verse because this is a verse you'd want to change. This verse that says, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect is a very problematic verse. So we're going to go and look at translation comparisons. You see that before of God in Christ in the KJV? So let's go to our popular versions. Like right? This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterwards cannot disannul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promises of void. You notice something missing in this verse? Any Anyone important 
in this verse that's kind of missing that you think probably should be here that they just kind of erased and excluded because they want to teach carnal Zionism and they try to tell you that, oops, Christ, the body of Christ can't be in the quote unquote in the old quote in the in the in the old quote testaments, you know, even though it says before 430 years before they're saying the body of Christ can't be in the Old Testament, even though God said, even though Christ said that was me, that was in that church in the wilderness. Right. They're like, no, that can't be you because you're 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 only you only showed up on the scene in the New Testament. They, I guess they don't realize God is a spirit, but let's just ignore that. Hence, that's why they need Trinity. They need, they need to make God flesh. Right. And then they make the, the quote people who are carnal Jews who say they're Jews according to the flesh. They make them hypocrites because they're saying, well, God's not God's not flesh. But yet they're boasting in their flesh. Well, OK, well, we we'll agree. God's not flesh. So how is it? Does God. Did, so the question is, if God's not flesh, how are you claiming to be children of God? You're saying it's by flesh. So you're saying someone had sex and made these little children of God. That's not true. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. God came in the flesh, but God's not flesh. And so what they've done in ESV is they've completely erased Christ from the verse. Let's go back to uh, KJV. KJV says, And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, where? In Christ. Go to the ESV. In Christ is completely gone. NIV, what I mean is this, that the law introduced 430 years later did not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. <laughs> I mean, they just took Christ completely out because they know that once you get into Christ, they know it's not by works or anything. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to convolute and confuse you and say, well, okay, well, there were certain other things you had to do. And that's why these guys have something called the Noahide laws. That's why this guy is saying there's something. What did they do? There's something that they did. Well, no, they got the knowledge of good and evil through eating from the tree, the forbidden fruit. And once they had the knowledge of good and evil, their conscience bore witness to them, right? That they sinned. And once they did that, they had that conscience. Then Jesus came to them when they tried to cover themselves, right? And he came to them and what? Gave them a covering, which represents what? <laughs> represents the covering of Christ. I mean, Christ, they try to keep Christ out of the old quote Testament, but he did actually show up in the garden like first thing. So actually that's kind of stupid for people to even believe that when Christ showed up, <laughs> Christ, Christ is the one who showed up uh, with Adam to Adam and Eve. So their whole lie that the body of Christ isn't in the old Testament is just the dumbest thing that people believe. It's, it's almost unbelievable that people, believe. but the only reason people, they get away with that is because people believe the concept of Trinity, which is a false concept. Right. And, uh, so that's what it says there. NASB, did it take out Christ too? What I'm saying is this, the law which came 430 years later did not invalidate, does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God so as to nullify the promise. See, they're trying to confuse, convolute it. But notice they, they all conveniently took out Christ. Everyone took out Christ. But these guys, you know, they, they love Jesus, right? They love Jesus. They're not trying to steal his glory or anything. No, they're not trying to they're not trying to steal his glory and glorify themselves by making God's children of the flesh. They're not. No, they wouldn't do that. And this I said that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, what God in Christ, God in Christ. Right. Meaning. God came in the flesh, but God's not flesh. God in Christ. The law, which was four hundred and thirty years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So it's just letting you know that everyone who is saved was saved by what? Grace through faith. Right? So we see that corruption. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added. Do you see that? Wherefore serveth the law? If you have children who are bad, you give them a law, but that law is for whose protection? Is that law for you or for them? Is it for your benefit or for them, their benefit? I mean, if you have children, you'd rather they be obedient and not have to suffer whatever consequences of whatever they do. Those of you who have children know this is true. But you give them the law. That's not for you. You know that the law can't save them. The law, you know, the, the more belligerent they get, the more laws you have to, the more rules you have to put on them. But that only just reveals that they're what? Coming short of what you want from them. So you know that they're not going to be saved by the law. 
the fact that you have to keep adding to the law just proves that they can't be saved by the law, which is why Christ, when he shows up on the scene and the Pharisees are trying to use the law, he just added to the law. He just said, OK, well, no, actually, if you even look on a woman with lust in your heart, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you know, if a man asks for your coat, you know, give it to him. If he asked you to go one mile, go two. like he just kept elevating and elevating. And he said, OK, if you want to be justified by the law, let me show you. Let me show you that you can't keep the law. And some of them, even to this day, are blind and don't realize that they can't be justified by the law. They'll sit there, break the law every single day, but they're thinking they're keeping the law somehow. All right. It was added because of transgression. Right. The law was added because of transgression. Wait a minute. If the law was added because of transgression, what was what was the sin? I think this is where we go to John 16, 9. It says, of sin because they believe not on me. Right? Of sin because they believe not on me. If we go to John 16, 9. See, that's why they try to take Christ out because they try to pretend Christ wasn't around. They, they don't seem to understand that God's the spirit. And it talks about this. He says, and when he has come, he, this is talking about the Holy Spirit, right? He will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of what? Judgment. Of sin, because of what? Because they believe not on me. Right? That's the sin. Because of belief. It's unbelief. And then the law just is added because of what? Because of unbelief. Because you don't believe, now I'm going to give you the law. Right? And then the law lets you know what the perfect will of God is. But this is the will of him that sent me that all who see the son and believe him have everlasting life to get everlasting life. That's a free gift you get by the by the by the promise, which is if you believe the gospel, you sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Right. And then the law is a good thing. It's not that the law is bad. It's just that you can't be justified by the law. Right. Of righteousness, because I go to the father, and you see no more of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So that lets you know the prince of this world is already judged. So. That, that's the thing. And so it's saying it was added because of the until the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hands of a what? Mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is what? One. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is a spirit. Right? Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law, right, given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law, right? But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that what? This is exactly what I told you, to them that believe. But before faith came, we were what? Kept under the law. The law just showed us that we needed grace shut up unto faith which should afterwards be revealed right cuz you you don't you don't know about Christ before someone comes to you and gives you the gospel and they reveal to you they give you the knowledge of the truth and that knowledge of the truth is that what that you're that we're we're corrupt we're sitting in darkness there's no light in us and that we need to look to who we need to look to the light of the world which is who which is Jesus we need to believe on him right we need to believe on him so they give us the the light of the glorious gospel right and that's what that light that shines in the darkness. Wherefore, the law was what? Our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. This is why they can't have Christ in the Old Testament. That's why they erased it. That we might be justified by what? By faith. Right? But after that faith has come, we are no longer what? We're no longer under a schoolmaster. Because there's no need. The law is there to let you know you're a sinner and you need to believe the gospel. Once you believe the gospel, you're born again. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You don't need the law from that standpoint because you have you have eternal life and you can't lose eternal life. Once you're born again, once you're regenerated by the incorruptible word of God, that's it. You're saved. You can't be lost. For ye are all the children of God by faith. What? In Christ Jesus. Right? For as many have been baptized into Christ have done what? put on Christ. All right? So that that's that's the beauty of it. So that's one. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to go to um 
I want to go back to Adam because he's asking about what, what do they do? Well, and so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man was made a what? Quickening spirit. Right? The last Adam. Right? So Adam, right? First Adam was flesh. <laughs> Adam believed. And the second Adam was what? Made a quickening spirit. Made. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Adam was made a quickening spirit. The children of the flesh are not children of God. How be it that that how be it that was not first, which is what spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is what spiritual, right? The first man is of the earth, right? Adam was made from the dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, because what is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Is no longer Adam that lives, but Christ that liveth in Adam. Is no longer David. Is no longer Abraham. Is no longer Isaac. Is no longer Jacob. Is no longer all the people who are saved can say is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. That's why they don't want Christ in the Old Testament, right? As is the what earthy. It says, "Be ye not conformed to what this world." So you got to be born again in what. In the heavenly image. So they say all men are made in God's image, but once man has fallen in sin, then that's blasphemy because we're in his image, but we are what? He that committed sin is of the devil. But it says he that is born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. Why can't his seed, his seed remaineth in him and, he can, and you cannot sin because God said, once you believe, once you're born again, you're a new creature in Christ. You're sealed in the light. And once you're sealed in the light, you, you're not, you can't escape it because you're already a new creature in Christ. And no darkness can get into Christ, right? In him is no darkness. So that's why it's saying, look, now you're now you're sealed in Christ, who is the what? Expressed image of God, right? You're no longer the image of the what? Beast, the image of darkness, the image of what? Death, right? As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such as they also that are what? Heavenly. Here's the part. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. The reason it says we shall also bear, meaning future tense, is because you still have the facade. You still have the flesh, but you're no longer a child of the flesh. The Acts of the Bible says we are dead to the flesh now. We're children of the spirit of eternal life. The flesh dies and goes what? Back to the dust, right? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption, right? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, what? Incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on what? Immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on in mortality, then should be brought to pass the thing that is written, death is what? Swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is what? The law. The law, no one's going to be justified by the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, that's what it's all about. That's what the sin was the sin was the sin was unbelief. The sin was unbelief, right? They got that they ate for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They had a conscience. They knew their conscience accused them. They already knew they were accusing them because they were accusing other people of doing things right away. The Adam blamed his wife. The wife the the wife blamed the serpent, right? And the the, blame, the the accuser that the Satan is the accuser, right? The accusing started right away, and he's and Adam actually blamed. Adam actually blamed God, right? He blamed God. Is that woman that y'all that thou gave me, right? He blamed God. He blamed the woman and God. The woman blamed the serpent, <laughs> right? And he said, "On thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life." And dust is actually all men are of dust. Dustly, all men will be swallowed up in death. That's why he's saying that you know. The childbearing she will conceive and multiply in sorrow, great sorrow, because all her children according to the flesh will die. But all the children according to the promise, those who are born again by the spirit have eternal life. Those children will what? They will live forever. And that's why it talks about Agar. 
in Mount Sinai because it's all this whole thing is just saying that, look, you know, tell me that the desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? You're not going to be justified by the law. For as written, Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid, one by a free woman. It's talking about the bond one was born after the flesh. The free one was of the promise, which is by spirit. These things being an allegory, of the two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, that being the law generated to bondage, right? That law just multiplies and multiplies. And this Agar, Mount Sinai in Arabia, answers to Jerusalem, which now is in his bondage with her children. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. You can't, flesh and blood can't enter the kingdom of God. We just saw that. So you got to be born again by an incorruptible seed by the spirit. For it is written, Rejoices thou bearest that bearest not. Break forth and cry, that's travailest and travailest not, right? Desolate have more, the desolate have more children than that she that has a husband. And then it goes on, it goes, Now, you brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So Isaac came before Jacob. So it's letting you know, this is, Jacob was the same deal, right? It's the same deal with Jacob. He believed Jacob was in Christ. That's why they tried to erase the part about Christ, is because they can't have Christ be in the Old Testament. And here goes the thing that exposes them. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. This is exactly the opposite of what Zionists tell you, right? They say, well, if you look at the quote Holocaust, you know, and I don't know, I wasn't there. So I, I can say it was horrible. Whatever happened was horrible. But, you know, guess what? Atrocities happen to all kinds of people all over the world. Anybody who doesn't know that. I don't even understand how you can, it's just, you, got, you can't be that naive to know that you, if you think that atrocities haven't happened to all people in war, rape, all kinds of horrible things, that men haven't done horrible, incredible things, even in these here United States, then I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you at this point. I really don't. But um, so it's saying here that the children of the flesh persecute him that was born after the spirit because why is that? Because what you've done to the least of these of my brethren, you've done it unto me. And Christ, when they ask Christ, who's thy brother, who's thy sister, thy mother, he says, it's those that do the will of my father. And with the will of the father, John 16, 40, is all who see the son and believe on him have everlasting life. That makes that means they're the body of Christ. And he's saying what you've done to the, the them, you've done to me. And what you've done to me, you've done to them. That's how it works. Right? Nevertheless, said the scripture, cast out the bond woman and her son. That's the children of the flesh, because all the flesh is going to be cast. They're going to they're going to die. And then that evil spirit will be cast out, whereas the spirit of God returns to returns to home. Right. The seed returns home. Right. Uh, springs up life eternal. And so the son of the bond woman shall not be the heir with the son of the free woman. Right. So then, brother, we are not the children of the bond woman, but of the what of the free the children of promise. So I hope that helps. But. You know, these you can't these guys call themselves rabbis and they're the same Pharisees of the old times and they're trying to relish in their flesh. But like I said, you know, children of the flesh are at enmity with God. Children of the flesh cannot please God. You know, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Unless a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says that over and over again. So don't let somebody who says, Well, you gotta understand that that's not written for you and even though it says my sheep hear my voice and and my sheep believe and I give unto them eternal life. God's a God of living and not the dead. Someone just tells you, well, I know it says that, but you're like, wait a minute. If God's a God of living and not the dead, and he said he came only for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. And you, there's people who call themselves Jews who died in unbelief. Then how can Jew be, be a, by race, by flesh? That makes absolutely no, It's just a little bit of critical thinking can get us past these lies. Look, if God says, I'm God is a God of living and not the dead. Satan's children die, right? Sin will fulfill itself, bringing forth what? Death. Right. For this purpose, the son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Christ rose from the grave. He, was, he, he died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's our hope. Right. And so we believe on him. We have everlasting life. And then he says he came only for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. Then he says, so he told a guy who called himself a Jew. He said, you believe not because you're not my sheep. Though he said, I came only for the law sheep of the household of Israel because God knows from the beginning those who would not believe and who should betray him. He said, I come only for the law sheep of the household of Israel. He didn't say, well, I come and if you reject me, I'm going to do a periodic pause and there's going to be another pay phase and blah, blah. No, he didn't say that. And so he told the guy, he says, you don't believe because you're not my sheep. And so what was our criteria for being a sheep? Believing on the Lamb of God. <laughs> What's the criteria for being a son? Believing on the only begotten son of God. It's pretty, pretty, it's not really that hard. It's like these guys are trying to make it. 
And so he's saying, you're not my sheep because you don't believe. He says, my sheep have eternal life and they shall never perish. He's saying that my sheep follow me in the washing, renewing, regeneration of the Holy Ghost. And you only get the Holy Ghost after you hear and believe the gospel. Then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. The children of the flesh are not children of God. The children of promise are counted for the seed. All these things are very consistent. You can't let somebody just lie and explain it away to you and throw all kinds of accusations of anti-Semitism. It's not anti-Semitic to say that there's sin, there's all of sin to come short of the glory of God and you don't get a special pass and your pain and suffering doesn't surpass the pain and suffering of other people. In fact, a lot of these guys are talking about stuff that happened to their supposed relatives and you're like, dude, it didn't happen to you. That's like me talking about something that happened with my grandparent and I don't think people would be too sympathetic if I was like, okay, this happened to my my grandparents, thus, the, or my great grandparents, or my grandparents, thus, the, you gotta treat me like I'm God's chosen people based on that. You, no one would go for that. Uh, most people wouldn't. So the fact that you're doing it for them just shows you have respect to person, and that's just how men are. Men, men's bias, but you know God's not. So praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Amen. the guy called himself a rabbi. He wanted to know what you know what happened. What did they do uh, back in the time before the law was given? And, you know, another thing that's mentioned in Second Peter 2, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets and teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. And through covetousness shall... They, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, right? These are money changers. These are those who don't believe it's a free gift. These are those who try to buy and sell in the quote-unquote temple. Um, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of what? righteousness there's none righteous no not one he became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness abraham believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness blessed is the man whom god will not impute sin said david from faith to faith the just shall live by faith bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with the overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the what? Flesh. The children of the flesh are not the children of God, the children of promise are for the seed. He that is born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. In the flesh, in the lust of uncleanness, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. Why do they always resist the Holy Spirit, you stiff neck and uncircumcised? They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not reeling accusations against them before the Lord. But these, right? But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understood not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, right? But you must be born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible word of God and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to ride in the day. The gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, but to those of us who are saved is the power of God unto salvation. Spots they are, blemishes, 
sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery. They cannot cease from sinning, beguiling unstable souls, right? They cannot cease from sinning, right? By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, all right? Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covenant practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages, right? Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Let he that whoever willeth, let him that cometh and take the drink of the water of life freely. The spirit and the bride say, come. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with the man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are what? Wells without water. He that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Right? He that drinketh of me shall never thirst. I am the bread of life. Clouds they are, carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Right? While they promise them liberty, he whom the sun set free is free indeed. They themselves are servants of corruption by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified. You must be born again, not of corrupt seed, but by the incorruptible word of God. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. For of whom a man is overcome, death of the same is brought into bondage. Those who believe on me shall never die. Death, where is thy victory? Right? Grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy victory? Grave, where is thy sting? Of the same is he brought into bondage, right? Jesus led captivity captive. For if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're the people, Jesus led captivity captive. He died for our sins. He fulfilled the law. And then you come to those people who are already captive and you tell them, look, Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. You believe that. You pass from death to life and shall not come into condemnation. Right? He freed you from having to try to work the law. And they then get entangled again and they try to go back to the law instead of just believing the gospel. That's called blasphemy. All manner of sin shall be forgiven men, but blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right? They again are entangled therein and are overcome. The latter end is worse than them that... Then the beginning, fear not he who can kill the body, but who can cast both body and soul into hell. For it had been better for them not to have known what the way of righteousness. These are those who don't believe the gospel. The gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. The preaching of the cross is foolishness in that perish, but through those of us who are saved is the power of God and the salvation. Right? It'd be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. He became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If righteousness has come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, believe the gospel. Repent of your works. Repent of your deeds because you're not going to be justified by the law and believe the gospel. Right? To he that worketh not but believeth on him to justify the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit. Right? Again, right? He that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. These guys, gods are their belly. They eat stuff that comes out of their belly. And out of their belly is just vomit. Right? It's vomit. Right? So they don't want to eat the bread of life. They don't want to eat the heavenly manna, right? They don't want to drink from the spiritual water. They want that carnal stuff, that food that you eat that you'll perish. And they just keep eating that same corrupt food.
fruit. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Right? Right? So, that's what was done. Praise my Lord and Savior. Amen.